my guys. Know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys on my side. CJ Ike, now I gotta roll with ice. Cool, these brothers my guys. Know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys on my side. CJ Ike, now I gotta roll with ice. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Combat Fitness Podcast, where our goal is to give you as much free information as possible in order to give you an edge in fitness and in life. Real quick, as always, the content of the Combat Fitness Podcast is for informational purposes only and is not designed to replicate proper medical advice or replace it. Uh, Always consult a healthcare professional before making a change to your fitness and or nutrition regime. Let's get it. Right on. So today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter Um, We dropped an Instagram post a few days ago that got a lot of traction and you guys really seemed receptive to what it said. So I'm going to go ahead and read that off for you and then I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on kind of what we meant by it. So it says, maybe you need to hear this, maybe not, but here it is. You need to stop limiting yourself. Other people are going to try and limit you throughout life. Why also do it to yourself? Most people lose things before they even start. If you believe you are a fat person who has bad genetics and will never get in shape, then guess what? You're never going to get in fucking shape. If you believe you're just bad at math, then you will never be able to learn. You aren't anything. You are a blank canvas. You get to create you. Shed your limiting beliefs, step out of the imaginary bullshit box you built for yourself, and rediscover what's possible. As stupid and cliche as it sounds, just fucking believe in yourself. For once, just assume you're actually capable of whatever it is you want to do, then start moving towards it. Taking the first step is the hardest. You need to step out of your comfort zone. You need to believe you're capable. Otherwise, you've lost without even beginning. Make that mental switch. Fuck whatever you were in the past and whatever other people think about you. You live inside your own head. Act accordingly and crush it. So, it's a bit of a longer post. Um, But all that to say... The biggest barrier we often face in life is ourselves, almost always. Um, We come up with excuses for why we can't do things before it even happens, like all the time. This is true in fitness. This is true in life. You know, you you talk to somebody like, oh, you should be a doctor. It's like, oh, well, I I don't know if I'm smart enough. It's like, why? Who told you? Who who made you believe that? Like you have just admitted, def- did you go, did you write the MCAT? Did you get into med school and get kicked out for being not smart enough? Like, no, you know, did you have a decent GPA? Yes. Okay. Well then like, you're probably like, why are you, why are you telling me you're not smart enough? Or, you know, we, we talk to, we do like one-on-one strategy calls with you guys all the time. And, and that's, this is something that comes up. Well, it's like, well, I'm just not a runner. It's like, why, you know? You're, you're a human being. You evolved to run. You like That's literally how your ancestors survived. What makes you different from, from the seven other billion people on earth that makes you not a runner um, other than the fact that you don't run, right? Like you, have you ever trained your run? No. Okay. Well, that's why you're not a runner, right? It's not like you have some genetic combination that makes you not as fast at running. Of course, genetics play a factor on on the far end spectrums of fitness, right? Like I may not have the build to be able to compete with Yoli Kipchoge in a marathon, but that doesn't mean that I can't like run at a decent pace. We do this to ourselves and we do it all the time. And I think a lot of it comes from, uh, things that were put into us as, as we were kids, like these, these ideas, these constraints, you know, maybe you weren't good at math in grade four. And so in grade five, you didn't do as well. And that kind of carried with you, but it does, doesn't mean that there's like something in your brain that makes you stupid at math. And I'm guilty of this for myself, particularly with math. Um, and that's why I use it as an example. It's always been something that I've been hung up on. Um, but everybody has, you know, probably a dozen things that they assume that they're just good at or not good at. Uh, when in reality, that just stems from from a self fulfilling prophecy, right? Like you you convince yourself you're not good at something, therefore you won't be good at it. And the same is true with things we're good at, right? If you if you go into uh, a competition believing that you're truly incredible and naturally gifted at what you're doing, like you're gonna do better than the guy who shows up and and thinks he doesn't belong there, and that just plays into like the almost the sports psychology element of it. But where I want to go with this specifically is like. This is a huge, easy change that you can make in your own life, especially if um, you're somebody who's lost 
your fitness, right? And you're looking to get back into fitness and, and build yourself back up is like just shed those those beliefs, all of the beliefs you have. You know, the belief that you'll walk into a gym and people will make fun of you for being overweight and, and being in the gym. Like get get that out of your head because that's that's not going to be the case. Get it out of your head that you're never going to be able to run again because you're overweight. Get it out of your head that you don't have time to work out because there's people that, that are busier than you, that have worse schedules, that have more kids, that have longer hours for less pay, that are still making it work. All of the things, for the most part, all of the reasons why we tell ourselves we can't do something are, are fabricated. And often it is a mental self-defense mechanism, right? Where it's easier to, to not try and therefore not fail than it is to try and potentially fail. Another thing that this ties into, especially if you're somebody who had a decent level of fitness and you've lost it over the years, is getting back into it sucks. It sucks, right? If you used to be able to run, uh, you know, if you used to be able to bang out 40 minute five miles or whatever, and you were in the military and you had a, yeah, you know, you were in good shape, you liked the way you look, and you got out and you've been living the, the pizza and beer diet since then, like going for a run is going to fucking suck because you're going to go for a run and you're going to say, wow, I'm running a 15 minute mile and I'm out of breath at the end of one mile. I used to be able to run five of these, no problem. Like what happened to me? Um, and so again, your, your brain's like self-defense mechanism is going to, that switch is going to flip and your brain's going to tell yourself, well, just don't run, right? Because then you don't have to expose yourself to the fact that you're not where you used to be and you don't have to feel that that shitty feeling of you've lost your fitness. And this is very real. And this is true, you know, using extreme examples, right? Where you're somebody who's gained 60 pounds and now you can hardly run. It's also true on a, a much smaller level where if you're a high performance dude and you're used to running 35 minute five miles and you took two months off and now you're at 40, like that can be just as frustrating. Um, even though it may sound petty to somebody who's, who's lost more, right? Um, all this to say, the only way through it is through it, right? You need to meet yourself where you are, not where you used to be. You need to accept the new terms for what they are, and you just got to power through it. And you'll see, you'll see the change in like four to eight weeks. Like it's not a long time, but you just got to bite the bullet and you got to mash through it. Um, circling back to to those kind of limiting beliefs and the the boxes we put ourselves in again, like. If you're in that position where you've gained all that weight, you've lost all that fitness, and you're telling yourself, like, man, I will never be back at the level I was at when I was 20. Like, guess what? With that mindset, like, as, as again, as cliche and stupid as it sounds, with that mindset, you will make sure that you will never be back at the level you were at when you were 20 years old. Because you just, you just up and said it. You haven't even tried, right? You haven't even started the process back to it. And you've sat back and said, I'll never be back at that level. Like that's that's honestly ridiculous. And but again, I understand. And I, like I've I've said this myself. I've lived this myself. Um, like I think I mentioned on the last episode, I will never I will never give advice or or speak to anything I haven't experienced to some extent on my own. Um, but when you look at it from a third party stance, you know, not even working towards something and then just openly stating you will never be at X or Y or Z again is is insane. Like, how about you try and do everything you can to get back to that level first for years. And then if you don't hit it, you can say, you know what, maybe I'm just too old. Maybe I won't quite be at that level, but at least you're within 5% rather than just accepting the fact that you're 80 pounds overweight. And because of your age, you'll never be back at the level you were at when you were 20. Like that's, that's insane. There's 50 year olds that are in better shape than, than they were when they were 20. Age has has nothing to do with it. Size has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with your ability or inability to do the hard things to get you from A to B. That's what that's what life boils down to, right? Um, if you do if you do the required work, and there are there are systems that are proven to to get you there. Um, if you do the required work, you will get where you need to be, provided you don't admit defeat before you've even started, right? And that's, that's what I really want to hammer on is like, stop giving yourself reasons why you can't do things before you've even tried to do them. Like if you're, if you're not going to, if you're going to the gym zero times a week, how can you say, I don't have time 
to go to the gym when you haven't tried to fit it in your schedule. You haven't moved things around. Like, and this is something I say all the time. Do you really think that you are the busiest person in the world? Like you're probably not. There's probably a single mom somewhere with more kids than you that's working longer hours for less pay that's still getting it in. And, and it just comes down to prioritization. And I don't ever want to be the guy to say like, you know, well, fitness just obviously isn't a priority to you. And it's, it's cause it's okay if it's not, um, but it's not okay to really want to do something and then give yourself every reason under the sun, why you can't do it before even trying is kind of the point I want to illustrate there. If you are too busy, if you are genuinely too busy to fit in any meaningful exercise or training, that's fine. That's okay. And we go through phases of life where like that is the case. And it doesn't always have to be a priority. It's, that's fine. It's not okay if that goes on for years and years and you constantly complain about how you're overweight and you need a change and whatever when you're not doing anything to, to really try and make that happen. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, again, this is this is a shorter episode. I just kind of wanted to elaborate on on that Instagram post about how we so often in life we admit defeat before we even start, right? We give ourselves reasons why we can't do something before we even try to do it. I've had conversations with people who who do nothing except work like ten days a month, and then the rest of their time is is free time. They sleep in, they play video games, and they say they're too busy with work to train. And it's like, that is, that is completely false. Cause I know people personally, and I would include myself in this camp where it's like you regularly, regularly work 12 to 16 hour days and have other com commitments and still fit it in. So it's, it's tough. Um, it's tough sometimes to, to have those conversations where it's like there, you, you obviously just don't want solutions. Um, and that's okay too. But if you, if you don't want solutions to your problems, then, then don't ask other people for help, right? If you're not willing to do the bare minimum yourself to, to improve yourself, don't ask other people for help before you're willing to do that. Uh, and that's, that's a hard truth that, that some people might need to hear. But with that, if you do want to make change, stop limiting yourself before you even try, right? Try everything and then you can determine what you're good at like you if you have stubborn body fat it's like have you followed a a proper caloric deficit and tracked your calories and your macros for over six months while doing cardio and regular strength training no then it's probably not stubborn body fat right it's probably you just haven't done the right things you either haven't done the right things or you've done the right things but not for long enough um and this is kind of another thing that, that we hear on on a lot of calls right is like i've tried everything it's like you might have tried everything, but you only tried everything for two weeks at a time. And it's not long enough to see results with anything, right? Despite what the fitness industry tries to feed you all the time, there there are no rapid, meaningful transformations, right? Sure, you can lose 30 pounds in one month, but the rebound rate is, is like 90 something percent. Uh, anything meaningful is is slower and more calculated. So you, you might have tried everything, but you haven't tried anything long enough to actually do it. And that's that's one of those other beliefs is like, I've tried everything. Uh, and so nothing's going to work for me. And it's like, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if we do the right things over a long enough time period, you will see the results you want. And that's kind of what it boils down to is, is just stop giving yourself reasons why you can't do something. And then magically you'll just start achieving things because you just, you, you stick with something long enough that it works. And that's really what it boils down to. So again, a bit of a, bit of a shorter episode, a little bit more crass, um, might've offended some people. That's fine. Um, if if you're offended, feel free to email us and, and let us know, and we can uh, we can talk about it. I hope that helped some of you, right? Uh, I'm sure, or at least I would hope that while you were listening to that, you were thinking kind of in your own head some things that you might be telling yourself that may or may not be true, that may or may not be hindering what you're doing. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, even though we we tell some hard truths sometimes, we genuinely do love all of you guys. Uh, it means the world that you take time out of your day to listen to this and, and read our emails and our Instagram posts uh, and, and train with us and book calls with us like that. Um, I can't I can't overstate how awesome that is. Uh, and thank you guys for that. Uh, if we could ask one thing in return, if you guys could share this podcast with a friend, 
uh, that would be awesome. That's kind of the only way we grow this thing. We don't ever run ads. We don't charge for this. Um, word of mouth is, is king when it comes to this. So that would be awesome. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take it easy.